Well, hey guys, Donna here, and I'm in Guatemala for the last night, and I just wanted to hop on and do a quick Facebook Live. I, of course, in typical Donna fashion, didn't do a good enough job of sharing the testimonies. I think in the coming weeks on some of my... Um, you know, my, my weekly show, I'll bring on some guests. But I just want to say, hey, everybody, hey, uh, Valentina joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Those of you who are joining on the replay, uh, feel free to um, add your comments. Kristen's here. Kat's here. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Donna Parto joining you from my hotel in Guatemala City, Guatemala. Yolanda's here. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Welcome. Glad that you could join me. Uh, I just wanted to take a couple minutes to give you an update about the Guatemala trip. And there's just one testimony that I really want to share. Hey, Jenny, glad you could join me and uh, just share what's on my heart and also things that are coming up through the ministry. Hey, Gladys, glad that you could join us as well. Dolores, love you in Australia. So glad. And um, okay, so. I want to share a testimony and then I want to just share kind of a, a recap of, um, of what I feel like God did in Guatemala. The biggest thing to me was just the incredible manifestation of the presence of God. It was, inc it was tangible. The, the presence and the power of God and the outpouring that we saw was unbelievable and it continues we ministered uh, Hector and I ministered in a church in Guatemala City Sunday morning and I, I couldn't move um, I gave a prophetic word and then I was just praying I, I couldn't move from my spot because the, the presence of God was so powerful and we've spent all day Sunday all day today uh, with some of the leaders from that church and we feel like God's doing a divine connection and they want to go to hope of life now They're like they want to take their youth group. They're like will you come and be the speaker if we bring our youth group So we'll see how that goes. Hey Lauren glad that you could join us as well I just want to share this one testimony because it's it it really I think Every person on the team would say amen to this Our team was amazing. We had 40 people uh, we, I think we had like 50 sign up and some couldn't make it except it was 40 ish. I'm telling you, we were so united. There was no drama. We were one team. There was such love, such love, such fun. It was one of the most amazing spiritual experiences of my life. And we had promised them you know, seven days, we're going to transform you so you can transform the world. I can't wait to see what God is going to do. And I just want to share one testimony that I think just speaks for everybody. And this was put up by Stacy Breckbill uh, Woodford. And she came with her mom. As I said, we had nine, we had a nine-year-old. We had a couple of high school students. We had college-age students. Uh, we had a lot of middle-aged people. We had people in their 70s. So it ran the whole gamut. We had people from all over the world. We were actually thinking about it. You know, of course, we had the people from Costa Rica, but some of the Arizona team were our immigrants. You know, we had people, uh, two of them were from, uh, three of them were from Mexico. Uh, one was from, actually from Guatemala. We had someone from New Zealand, originally from South Africa. We had two young girls from Liberia. I mean, it was just incredible. Of course, we had people from all of the United States and from Canada, and yet we all came together in the power of God. So here's this testimony that I think everybody would just say, yeah, this is what happened. This past week in Guatemala was one of the most impactful of my life. Not only did I get to spend precious time with my mom, but we grew in unimaginable ways. God did a mighty work and we're just getting started. We were completely undone by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. You'd be in awe seeing in real life what was happening. Prophetic words, winds of the Holy Spirit, healing, powerful prayer. You'd think it was straight out of the book of Acts. This is no exaggeration. 
He touched us deeply and altered the course of our lives forever. We will treasure the friendships made, and we're so excited to see where this will take us to advance the kingdom. And then thank you to the leaders for living out your God-given gifts, for your leadership, vision, generosity. We love you. This was a trip of a lifetime. And I think every person on the trip would just say amen to that because it's what God did. It really, it was like the book of Acts. And I want to tell you that what changes people's lives is not sitting in a church pew listening to sermons. And I will stake my reputation on this next sentence. I will guarantee you, I'm going to bring testimonies on. People will tell you, they grew more in the, la- in the last seven days here in Guatemala than they have in the last seven in sitting in a church. I will guarantee, there, I, I am telling you right now, I will find people from that team who will tell you, and I'll get them on Facebook Live to tell you themselves, because I know that I feel with every fiber of my being, I know this is the truth. There are people who were more transformed in their Christian walk, in their walk with God, in these seven days in Guatemala than they have been probably in the last 10, 20 years, maybe their entire Christian walk. I'm telling you, people will come and give that testimony. I feel it. I know it. We saw the power of God. The presence of the Holy Spirit was so thick you could barely stand up under it. We we saw people coming to Christ and just amazing. You've got to get out and do the stuff. You need experiential learning. I mean, look, we've all been sitting in pews. We've been listening to teachers on the internet. We've been listening to podcasts. We've been taking all this stuff up in our head, which is okay, which is great, right? It's better than watching Netflix. But I'm telling you, it's that experiential learning as being thrown into a situation where it's like, you're up. I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you, let me give you a couple examples. Geraldine, who was born and raised in apartheid South Africa, now lives in New Zealand. Um, we were in, um, we were in this remote mountain village. We had to stand in the back of pickup trucks on a dirt road to get there. Now, first of all, I, they're a bunch of middle-aged women. They're, fam- they're like, my husband would not believe <laughs> that I am doing this right now. Somebody take a picture of me standing up in the back of this pickup truck going up a dirt road to this remote mountain village. And we were there to minister to the children, which we did. But I'm like, while we're ministering to the children, rather than having their moms just standing there, let's pull them in and do an instantaneous women's conference. And on the spot, we put together a women's conference. (laughs) Yes, on the spot. And uh, I lined up some, you know, speakers and we're, we're standing there and one of the speakers is wrapping up and I walk over to Geraldine and I'm like, you're up. I want you to share next. She just looked at me like, ah, I'm like, yeah, you. And the, the speaker from uh, Costa Rica wrapped up and Geraldine stepped up and shared with these women, most of them indigenous, living in these remote mountain uh, village in Guatemala, thinking that their options are pretty limited. And Geraldine shared about her life. There was a school about 10 minutes from her house, but it was for whites only. So she had to walk 30 minutes and then get on a train and take the train for 30 minutes, get off the train and walk another 30 minutes, 90 minutes each way just to get to school. She shared that if she wanted to buy something in a store, she would have to go in and wait until every white person, even those who didn't matter, as long as a white person was in there, she wasn't allowed to make the purchase. So she would sometimes just have to stand there for hours but she said, you know what? I made a decision that my gov- that no one out other than me and my God get to decide what my life is going to be like. And I fought to have an education. And my husband and I fought to make a beautiful life for our children. And we've made education a priority. And now here I stand before you. You know, I'm one of the leaders of this, you know, mission trip to your country. I- you could have heard a pin drop. These same women who've been kind of restless, they were absolutely spellbound as this woman shared her incredible testimony. It was just unbelievable. And I shared this, I I think I shared this the other day, but it's worth sharing again. It's one of my favorites. One of my favorites was seeing um, this pastor, uh, Pastor Lester, 
standing up there trying to lead worship in Spanish. I'm like, it's like he doesn't even know any Spanish, but he's like singing along. He's got the words on his cell phone trying to make it happen because we didn't, you know, we're just throwing together a worship team. I was sitting at a table across from Ebony and, uh, you know, just kind of getting to know her. I didn't know her. She was brand new to me and, and to this ministry. And she was just kind of sharing her heart. And I'm like, you really have a passion for evangelism, don't you? And she's like, yeah, I guess I kind of do. I said, I think you're an evangelist. And I think God is going to open doors for you to evangelize. And at, I'm not exaggerating. As I said the words, our other leader, Hector Torres, tapped me on the shoulder, pulled me aside and said, an opportunity has just opened up for us to go out and do, ev- he's knocking at my door, so I'm going to have to go, and do evangelism. So I scream across the cafeteria, Ebony! I'm like, you are now a child evangelist. And see, this is the power. I have to wrap up because they're wanting me to go out to dinner. Um, this is the power of a mission trip. It's like, you're up. And I I have 40 people who just saw how we roll. We make it up as we go. Hey, Janet, love you. Love you to the moon and back. I was just talking about Tato. Um, And it really, my favorite translator. I I mean, let's say one if, so I don't hurt anyone's feelings, but definitely one of my uh, favorite translation partners, uh, her husband, Tato. But that is the power of experiential learning. It's like, you're up, you're it, that's it, make it happen. You know, you're running a VBS today. You're like, what? Yeah, you. And just dig deep into into um, the deepest part of who you are in your walk with God and make it happen. And so I just think that this is this is the power. I love taking people on mission trips. This was an amazing team. I, I, I don't even know if I could ever, it's like, Lord, could you do it again? Could you do it again? Ah! We have another trip coming up. We are going to minister in partnership with a group of Palestinians. If you go to DonnaParteau.com forward slash Israel, I'm telling you guys, so much is going on, but this is a huge part of, of what God is doing. He's, he's bringing together the Latinos. They're going to be, God's calling me to continue the mobilization of the Latino army that are going to go to the Middle East. And we believe that Jordan is going to be a landing strip for this Latino army to enter into the Middle East. And so we're going, yeah, we're going to do a biblical tour for sure. But spiritually, we believe it's going to be powerful, um, laying the foundation for what God is wanting to do in the Middle East. We're going to be doing a day of ministry um, with the Palestinians in Bethlehem, which is in the Palestinian territory uh, portion of Israel. And uh, we are looking for maybe two more people to join us. I've said it before. I'm going to say it one more time. If you bring five people from your circle of influence, your trip is free, and that includes your airfare, all included. Um, I just believe that there are some more people who need to be part of that huge move of God into the Middle East. We're partnering with the Arab Daughters of Deborah. These are women who are ready to go anywhere in the Arab world that God sends them fearless. Kim Craybill, you need to know about this. These are fearless, mighty women of God who will say they'll go anywhere in the Middle East, Arab believers. And they're just looking for us to partner with them, to sow into them, to encourage them, strengthen them, equip them, and then they'll go and do the work. And amazing that Kim is here because she's a mighty woman of God and a powerful leader of women. Um, Tamara, thanks for stopping by. We love you guys. I'm in trouble. (laughs) We're going out to one last dinner. Some of the leaders from our Costa Rica team are here. And um, yeah, they're banging on my hotel door. I just wanted to do an update. Love you guys. So proud of everyone who was part of this trip. And I'm just so filled with the Holy Spirit right now. It's like, ah, it's incredible. And I can't wait to impart that to those who are joining us in Costa Rica next month and then in Israel and Jordan. Oh, God, is so awesome. Guys, listen, this, this walk with God, it's supposed to be an adventure. Think about it. Love you guys.